I'm going to walk you through the best cards for every class and every part of the game, early, late, middle, whatever. So in the early game, we'll start with early game. Groves and cemeteries are your best friends. The cemeteries will be a little bit rough, but groves will definitely be easy. Rat wolves are pretty much the, one of the weakest enemies in the entire game. It's not the weakest enemy. Uh, you won't have access to some of these later cards early anyway. Uh, then definitely early game, the best enemy spawner is the spider cocoon. The spiders are the weakest enemy in the game by far. They spawn a bunch, which will give you a bunch of gear, a bunch of uh, cards, resources, etc. Just for straight up farming, uh, spider cocoons are great. And also, they're, again, they're not very dangerous. Battlefields are amazing if you are in the early game. They help you get good gear and all that and help you just, I don't know, keep up with what's going on the enemy levels and stuff when you don't have any supply items. By the way, if you want an OP supply item builds, uh, check out the description. I'll put links to other helpful loop hero resources that you can check out other videos I've made. Uh, Blood Grove, not very good. Bookery, you won't get till a little bit later. Uh, any of this, whatever. So we're still just doing early game. Uh, in the early game, rocks are your best friend. Meadows are okay. Uh, rocks are really the powerhouse, though. You can get a crap ton of HP. Meadows do help, actually, a little bit in the early game, though. So they're not the worst. Uh, so definitely put, put the mountains as much as you can, though. And then as soon as you can get forest and river, go for forest and river. Uh, they're the best ones in the entire game. Uh, early, middle, late, if you can actually get to them, which they're way later on that you'll get them. But once you get them, they are insanely overpowered. Um, forest especially in the river just doubles the effects of the forest so forest is the one that you want to get first and that's like middle game that you'll end up getting that and then down here oblivion's always good being able to delete things that you don't want like goblin camps from the mountains and stuff if they're too strong that's pretty good everything else here kind of sucks uh, treasury's good early game just for farming resources so in the early game it's nice to throw down treasuries and surround them with meadows and rocks or whatever and then you know farm resources that's a very good thing to do uh, you won't get these till mid to late game the Arsenal uh, is definitely good. The Ancestral Crypt is the best of these four. But the Arsenal is good if you have that Bedome of the Ancestral Crypt. Everything else, zero milestones, just dangerous to even use. I wouldn't recommend using it. Also, Villages, if you have them early game, they're okay. You, know, you can slap down some Villages just for the extra rare loot. Helps you to keep up with your loot levels. So that's actually a decent thing. And a little bit of healing. They're actually pretty helpful in the early game. So as for mid-late game, uh, once you, let's just say once you have everything unlocked. So that's kind of like the beginning of the late game. Uh, ruins are good for farming gear. Uh, the, the snake things that are there, they're, I don't know, they just, they give really, really good gear. Swamps, terrible, from my experience. I never had good luck with swamps. Uh, wheat fields, uh, just too much of a hassle to deal with wheat fields and villages. Honestly, groves and cemeteries are the way to go. Uh, the reason for this is if you combo an ancestral crypt with groves and cemeteries, uh, skeletons and rat wolves have souls. So every time you kill them, you'll get three HP. Then get four on a tile for each. So that is whatever, four times three, 12 HP per tile of every one of these you just put down every loop. Helps you to keep up with the strength of what's going on because you'll keep farming hundreds of HP of maximum HP per level. Vampire mansions are great later on once you have some supply items so you're strong enough to deal with them because the vampires also have souls so it's t it attacks on a fifth enemy onto these battles. So you can cover the entire play like path with vampire mansions and then uh it'll add another vampire and you just keep on farming hp with ancestral crypt along with continue to farm resources and cards and everything and just keep up with the levels uh battlefield falls off it's not so good later on spider cocoon falls off they don't have souls so it's not worth it. better just place these and just farm these for souls for the ancestral crypt uh blood groves i've never I mean they're not that great honestly bookeries are nice they're not they're like be all end all you can just wait loops and just keep waiting to get the cards you want but if you know if you want to use a bookery it's not the worst thing ever it's okay and then uh road lanterns they kind of lose their effect late game uh back to early game for a second road lanterns are actually kind of helpful early game to keep the enemy levels down to two or three so you don't get overwhelmed so actually i forgot to mention that one road lantern is actually pretty nice for early game late game it's useless you want as many enemies per tile as possible because you want to farm max hp and stuff smith's forge honestly never messed with it it just seemed like it's not even that useful because the f item effect only lasts for 10 hits. and It's just, eh, I wouldn't even deal with it. Chrono Crystals, uh, they, I don't know, they're really not that useful. You can use them. They double the effect of a day's passing on, so you can spawn more enemies faster, but it's really not important. Like, it's it's not going to do that much for you. You can use it if you want, though. Outposts, uh, it's okay, but I personally don't use them. You can throw them down, but then you don't get any loot depending on how many you put down at least. And uh, I mean, early game, if, if you get if you can get the outpost early game, I guess it could help you by 
putting it all over the place and helping you to farm without getting killed. It, it just it just seems too complicated, too much of a hassle to even deal with, honestly. I wouldn't even bother with it, if, in my opinion. And then, uh, as for all these resources, once you have all of them unlocked, the only thing you're going to want to do is put down rivers and forests, and then possibly suburbs, especially Necromancer. Uh, Necromancer, you never want to go higher than about 250% attack speed, because anything higher than that, and the Necromancer will burn all his stamina by auto-attacking. So, uh, for Necromancer, suburbs are really nice because you can fill the map with thickets and rivers, not forests, just thickets. Thickets and rivers, and then once your attack speed's high enough, you can just fill the rest with suburbs. Because uh, you got to fill the rest with something. And you don't need rocks and mountains with the Necromancer because Ancestral, Crypt, and Supply will give you all the max HP that you need. Desert, honestly, not even worth the hassle because late game you should be going for builds that give you maximum HP. Maximum HP is broken in this game. Uh, so there's no point getting rid of your HP when your HP will scale so much higher than the enemy's HP. Meadow is completely worthless late game. The, it, it, since it heals a base amount, not a percentage, it just falls off super hard late game. So yeah, Forest Rivers are the play. Suburbs are okay if you want to throw them in uh, as a Necromancer. If you're on a Rogue or a Warrior, you just want to get full like 400-500% attack speed call today. Uh, as for these ones, Oblivion's always good to have. You never know when you want to erase something or you know delete something just to make room for something. You know, like if the first boss on Chapter Four spawns the palace, and you, if you want to clear the palace to make room for a few more groves and cemeteries, you know things like that. Uh, Beacon is really nice for farming. Potentially, you know, it saves it doesn't save much time, but you can always throw them down just to make your character move faster on the map. Uh, it'll save you time if you play without any cheats. You play with that don't if you play with normal game speed and all that, but that'd be it'd be okay. You can throw some of those down. Uh, Storm Temple is good in the mid game uh, because what you could do, if I remember, it was Storm Temple, right? I think it's, yeah, Storm Temple. So what you can do with Storm Temple is you can put one on one corner of the map where my mount, like my little arrow is at top left. You can place one on the other corner of the map. And then when you're doing your forests and rivers, you can just place, you can use your normal forests in line with the Storm Temples in order to make the burned forest tile combo. Because it gives the same, uh, burned forest is the same regardless of whether it was a thicket or forest. So you can use your forest cards for those. Fill the outside of the map with forests and then fill the rest of the map with rivers and thickets. And then it'll give you a nice combination of attack speed and magic damage, which magic damage damage is really nice. It won't give you an insane amount, but if you follow some river along with a lot of it, then you can get like 50 magic damage by the time you're done, which mid game, that'll help a lot. Late game, it falls off. It's not so important. But in the mid to early late game of like playing, you know, you've beaten chapter four, you're just farming resources and things. Uh, that's actually a decent strat. Uh, it, it won't help with Necromancer, obviously, but it'll help with Warrior and Rogue. It could, it could be useful. I, I've done it before. I did it before, before I hit super late game. So that's not a bad strategy. Treasury falls off. Later, you've Alchemy. You can just, it's, you just want to farm normal resources. The Gargoyles are kind of a pain in the butt. It's not worth the gargoyles that they spawn, so I wouldn't even bother. And then temporal beacons, I don't know. They're not. It's just not worth the hassle. Uh, speeds up time by fifty percent within its range, and then the time watchers that it spawns make time flow backwards. And it, it's just, it's just going to eat up another card from your deck. Like you want the minimum possible number of things, so that way you can get the cards that you want. Like ideally, if I could, I would just have only the vampire mansion and the grove, and then these ones. So that way I could just place only grows, but you know, you have to have a minimum number. So that's the only reason you'd even consider throwing the bookery on or the cemetery. I mean, you can use the cemetery, but groves generally better. So uh, then these ones down here, Ancestral Crypt's the best ones. Your milestones are just dangerous late game. It's not even worth the hassle. Uh, Maze of Memories, just for spawning bosses. It doesn't do anything. It's not even worth the time. Uh, Arsenal's okay, but the Ancestral Crypt is just so much better than the Arsenal. Like, no, no item's going to make up for the 10,000 HP you're going to get by loop level 30 or whatever. It's just, it's completely insane. Assuming you combo this with Grove and Cemetery. If for some reason you don't want to fight enemies that have souls, then Arsenal's great because Ancestral Crypt doesn't do anything unless you're killing enemies that have souls. So uh, that's uh, pretty much the gist of cards. Uh, that is everything I can think to mention about the cards. I mean, there's really, that's, that's the meta. That's the meta right now as of March 12th, 2021. Uh, obviously, it doesn't mean you have to use these cards that I said. It's just a game you can have fun. You can throw in whatever cards you want and just screw around. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But if you're just trying to min-max and you're trying to make the game as easy as possible, you're trying to, you know, just do everything as perfectly and as best as possible stats-wise, then, yeah, the cards I described to you, as I said in this video, that that's that's the way. Uh, I've, I've, I've played with these for an insane number of hours, more than I should, but I've been making videos, so I've been playing this way too much. So, uh, 
Yeah, that's cards. That is the card meta, meta right now in Loop Hero for the early game, the mid game, late game. Those are the best cards in Loop Hero. If this video helped you, consider helping us by subscribing to our channel. Tap this button over here and hit the red subscribe button. Subscriptions help a lot. Even if you never watch our videos again. Ha 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 ha!